contact athletes, athletes hearing this, young kids hearing this, ignoring return to play guidance can be dangerous. It's rarely, but potentially fatal, and it can be career ending. Hi there, I'm Dr. Mark. Over the last five years, I've worked almost exclusively with concussion patients, and in that time, I've helped over 500 people clear and recover from their concussion. So here on this channel, we discuss concussion rehab, how to get rid of your symptoms, and getting you back to sports, work, school, or just your regular life. Today in particular, we're going to discuss the relatively new but consistently growing research on why strict rest is actually not best after your concussion. It's kind of a myth that you should rest after your concussion. We're going to cover a three-stage flow of deconditioning from a paper published in 2016 that explains why rest probably causes your prolonged symptoms. Um, and I've actually seen this flow contribute to one patient going from a normal healthy teenager to being wheelchair bound. But fear not, we will quickly cover at the end how we can actually break out of this cycle. So the punchline is that ultimately strict rest after a concussion is a problem because of one thing, and that's deconditioning. So the context of conditioning, many athletes uh, will spend their off season conditioning or getting in shape for the season for their particular sport. And that's kind of what we're talking about in terms of deconditioning. But rather than just physical condition and fitness, we're also talking about other sensory systems. So if you're not exercising, you're certainly not getting more in shape. And beyond that in concussion, if you're not, you know, exposing yourself to lights, to sounds, to conversations, to crowds, to grocery store visual stimulus, you're going to decondition from those things as well. So as much as you can decondition from physical fitness, you can also decondition from lights, sounds, etc. So if that's possible, where did the recommendation for rest come from in the first place? For starters, the initial recommendation recommendations for rest, you can see them published in journal articles from the 1920s and 30s. And interestingly, this is back when we thought concussions, you had to pass out and you had to vomit to be classified as a concussion. Today, we know vomiting, recurrent vomiting as a red flag, and we know that less than 10% of concussions actually result in a loss of consciousness. But I digress. So in 2001, science caught up to justify the 1930s rationale for prescribing rest after mild traumatic brain injury or concussion. It was actually based on the neurometabolic cascade described by Giza and Hoda. So the two researchers, great researchers in the concussion world. And what they found is that after a concussion, the brain experiences this metabolic vulnerability and instability, this excitotoxicity as the neurometabolic cascade. And so the proposed idea there is we've got this vulnerability and this instability. So we should probably rest the brain to help it recover during this time because a second injury during this vulnerable period could be potentially severe or fatal. And so it was also thought that early exercise after the injury might interfere with the brain's ability to do this self-repair. So if you think about like an injured ankle, you don't want to jump on that, right? You want to give it time to heal. And so the idea was the same for the brain. After you shake it up, maybe rest might help avoid this exercise-induced damage problem. And we'll put quotes around exercise and do damage because that's actually not the case. So it was thought that rest would help restore normal brain function after an injury and prevent further damage that might be caused by doing too much. And this was actually reflected, this whole idea was actually reflected in the first international sports concussion consensus that was back in 2001. All these researchers met in Vienna and came out with the first concussion consensus. Return to play protocol, the first step was actually no activity or complete rest until your symptoms resolved. Like the first step in concussion recovery from international guidelines was to do nothing. So what has changed since 2001? If we take a 30,000 foot view and we just kind of summarize everything, what we'll find is that between 1928 and today in 2024, we've collected a boatload of animal and human data showing that strict and prolonged rest tends to lead to worse and prolonged symptoms. So said again, Strict rest has a higher chance of making your recovery longer and more severe, and we don't want that. So, kind of brings us to another question. If animal data shows us metabolic vulnerability and resting after a concussion feels intuitively good, what gives? Like, why would rest be a problem? If I go to get up and walk the dog and I feel a pounding headache, why would I push myself into that? So, let's actually discuss that three-step decline, that three-step flowchart into PCS. Now, PCS stands for post-concussion syndrome. It also stands for persistent concussion symptoms, whatever you want to call it. It's still kind of colloquially post-concussion, but why would you get post-concussion from resting? This was published in 2016 by Mark DeFazio and colleagues. DeFazio, DeFazio. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong and you see this, but what we got is after the injury, so injury is kind of implied, and then we got three steps after that. So after the concussion injury, you go to your doctor, and if they're following old guidelines, you'll say rest. So we prescribe rest. That's step number one. That was step number one in, in 2001. And it used to be called cocoon therapy in some circles. Doctors, I've actually seen videos, older videos, where doctors actually told their parents to treat their kids like mushrooms. Keep them 
in a cool, dark, and quiet environment. Don't bother them. Wait for symptoms to resolve. And so that leads us to the second bullet. So we've got the injury. Step one, prescribe rest. Step two, we see physical deconditioning consistently. Physical deconditioning, and then we'll also see anxiety, depression, and mood changes start to emerge from activity withdrawal, even if it's not sports. If it is sports, athletes, I know I as an athlete when I got injured would go through waves of like, oh man, I feel depressed or anxious. I just want to get back and play. Uh, but we see even removing from work, removing from school, removing from friend circles, removing from, again, sports. We'll see anxiety, depression, irritability start to emerge. Mood changes start to emerge around that withdrawal of activity. And so then step three, you go back to the doctor and the doctor goes, hey, how are you feeling today? And you go, honestly, I'm not feeling that much better. My headaches are still there. I'm still really fatigued. And actually I'm a little bit more anxious, irritable, depressed, something like that. And the doctor goes, mm, okay, well, maybe we should continue to rest before we go back to sport. And so then you're sent back up to the top. So we got an injury, we prescribe rest, we decondition, and we start to feel anxious and depressed and irritable and other symptoms aren't necessarily going away. So we go back to the doctor and tell them that and they go, mm, you should continue to rest. And so you continue to decondition and you continue to feel terrible and you go to your doctor and you should continue to rest and you should continue to rest and you should continue to rest. And so the cycle continues. And what happens when that cycle is allowed to just go. When we look across the data, numbers vary, but we can generally assume that without rehab, with improper rehab, so not active rehab, just kind of rest and wait sort of rehab, we'll see that about 30% of people go on to experience post-concussion symptoms, persisting concussion symptoms. And what that means technically is that your symptoms last longer than 30 days. So about 30% of people are going to have symptoms last longer than 30 days. And 30 days in the grand scheme really isn't that long. So does it matter? Yeah. A 2022 study in the Journal of the American Medical Association JAMA kind of shook up what we thought about concussion because everyone goes, oh, it should resolve in two to four weeks. Otherwise, it's made up. Otherwise, it's in your head. And then this 2022 JAMA study came out and kind of jostled that up. What they found, what they did is if you got diagnosed with a concussion in the hospital, they followed you out at two weeks and at six months just to see who has recovered and who hasn't. You got this sort of standard pamphlet of like, here's a concussion, gradually reintroduce activity, but mostly rest, blah, 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 blah. Here's some symptoms you might experience. Now, what they found is that at six months, 50 6% of people after given no rehab still had incomplete recovery. So more than half, about half, but a little more than half of people at six months without rehab are still not recovered. And it wasn't just like, oh, I got a little bit of a headache. It's It was impairing their work, their social, their sex, their, their everything life. You were actually not recovered. So how do we break out of that cycle? This is going to be the most anticlimactic thing you'll probably hear, but it is so true. Find a concussion literate doctor. When you can find a concussion literate doctor who can provide active rehab, that's when the ball starts rolling. That's when the needle, the progress needle starts moving. We want rehab to be active. If we look at the most recent international consensus data, so the sixth one, the first one was in Vienna in 2001. The sixth one was in Amsterdam in 2022. They actually recommend a symptom limited activity as the first step towards recovery. So it's no longer strict rest. It's actually do things within your symptom threshold right away. We're not going to hibernate. We're not going to cocoon. We're not going to go into a dark room. We're going to do as much as we can within our symptom threshold. And the current recommendations are actually to begin an aerobic exercise program as soon as two days after the injury. And in that same consensus, if symptoms are lasting longer than 10 days, you need to begin specific and active rehab. That is a massive shift from strictly resting until your symptoms magically disappear. And some of the initial data for this, some of the initial data for active rehab can actually be found back in 1950. And since then, we've got a lot more. And aside from the modern randomized control trials, when we give people aerobic exercise and we give the control group like stretching, we'll see definite changes there where aerobic exercise recovers unquestionably faster. But one of my favorite studies is actually from 2015 where they followed kids who were 12 to 19 years old and they tracked how well did you follow the doctor's instructions basically to rest. The kids who didn't listen to their doctors and returned to physical activity actually recovered faster. The better they followed the instructions, so the more they rested, the more they ad adhered to rest, the worse off they were. Now, huge, huge disclaimer, contact athletes, athletes hearing this, young kids hearing this, ignoring return to play guidance can be dangerous. It's rarely, but potentially fatal, and it can be career ending. So we don't want to say, oh, I can do physical activity. I'm just going to go back to my sport. But no, it means we're not going to hibernate. The kids who got back to kind of just going around their neighborhood and just kind of like hanging out with their friends and, and getting back to normal social activities, they did better. I'm not advising you to go 
back into your contact sport without actual proper clearance. So for folks at higher risk of concussion, when I'm talking like contact athletes, military service people, if you're watching this, what do you do? Seeing a concussion literate doctor within the first week of your injury can make you more likely to recover in the research standard 21 days or about three weeks. When we look at sports data, when we look at just kind of all kinds of data, we see that the average concussion sort of return to play full complete recovery when you're looking at the metabolic data, animals, humans, athletes, all that, you're going to see about a 21 day recovery. That's about three weeks. And that is about the same timeline as an ankle sprain. Your brain is a little bit more important than your ankle. In my opinion, please treat your brain at least as good as you would treat your ankle. Go through a proper active recovery and only return when you're ready. The difference in seeing a doctor within the first week of your injury or not could be the difference in an added 56 to 110 days to your recovery timeline. Um, we see that a difference in four days can be the 56 day difference. We see that a couple weeks could be 110 days. But the point is seeing your doctor sooner is better. Now, you're in the post-concussion bucket, you've had symptoms for a long time and you're watching this. For individuals at any stage, the faster you see a concussion later, a doctor, the faster you recover or at least make progress. This might be you're at 30% function right now. You see a concussion literate provider and you get 80% function. And that's the difference in being able to work or hang out with your grandkids or hang out with your own kids. That's massive and that's awesome. And you, you want active rehab to do it and finding a, a concussion literate provider is the best way to do that. So to give you a real stat from my clinic today in July, 2024, my chronic cases. So people who have had symptoms for longer than 30 days, that recovery time on average in my clinic stats is about 256 days or about eight months. Now, to give you some context, that sounds like a lot until you realize those chronic patients are an average of three to 10 years into their injury by the time they find me. So an eight month recovery feels pretty great when you've been dealing with symptoms for 36 to 125 months. If you're looking at my acute and subacute numbers, so really less than a couple of weeks, they recover in 12 to 30 days, two to four weeks, depending on your contact athlete status or not. I am not recovering athletes in 12 days or contact athletes in 12 days, but you can see that the sooner you get in, the better. But getting it at any time is better than dealing with symptoms for more months and more years. If you would like to get this rolling with a free concussion consultation with me, go ahead and check out the link in the description. Otherwise, if you like this video, you'll probably also like this throwback video on the age old and classic question I get from everyone is when can I drink alcohol after my concussion? It's a favorite question from some of my young athletes. Don't worry, they're not underage. It's usually with my college athletes, but it's a fun one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.